Now that Apple released the M2 chips in their new MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, they released the base model first. And if you followed any YouTube videos about this or other news, then you might have heard that the base models that were shipped come with only one NAND chip instead of two, therefore slowing down the I.O. or the disk write and read times by about two times. So we are getting half the speed. And that got me thinking, well, what about developers, software developers? Is this really important to us? Yes, of course, your programs are stored on the SSD, but how does that affect you day to day? For example, during my workday, I probably spend about 80% of my day in my IDE writing code. And within that 80%, the majority of my non-productive time or the time that I'm not writing code is spend waiting for it to compile something. Each time I hit build and go, I have to wait for the app to launch. And I'm sitting there staring at it. Sometimes I get distracted and I whip out my phone and start scrolling. Productivity goes down. What's the point of all these tests on this channel, right? All this compilation tests, comparing languages, comparing computers to each other. Is there really any point to it? Well, <laughs> When you're comparing things like the M1 to the M2, not really. There is a very small amount of difference between those two or what gains you can get by going from M1 to M2, for example. But cumulatively, when you're going from an older machine to a newer machine, you are getting that time back. You're gaining your minutes back, which eventually will add up to productivity gained, especially if you're making larger jumps, like going from an Intel Mac to an M2 Mac. So with the next set of tests that I wanna do for the M2 MacBook Air, that I got. This right here is a base model and I'm also getting the upgrade model with more RAM, more cores and more hard drive space. I really want to dial in the differences that people are going to see from generation to generation of using similar class machines and similar price machines. Now getting back to the topic of whether hard drives affect our work. I wanted to take it to the test. So I've got some code here. I'm going to build it, test it out on a built in hard drive and an attached hard drive and we'll see the differences there. I've got the MacBook Air. This is the Intel Core i5 variety from 2017. Why am I doing that now and comparing it to the M2 MacBook Air? Because I want to see a big difference. I want to see how much the processor will play a role in the compilations that we're going to do and not necessarily the hard drives or the SSDs. By the way, those are the internal drives. I'm going to test those. I've also got this Crucial disk, which is an X8 5 100 gigabyte drive SSD. And I've got this beautiful custom enclosure containing a Samsung SSD in there too. I forgot what's in there, but it doesn't really matter because it's gonna be consistent between these two machines. Now let's take a look at the disk speed. So they're both hooked up through a Thunderbolt dock right here on my M2 MacBook Air. On the custom external SSD, we're getting about 400, 400 on write and read. So not the fastest drive. Let's check out the crucial one. And this drive drive is uh, almost two times faster, reaching almost 800 and 800. And of course, the internal SSD on the M2, you've seen pictures of this already, we're reaching almost 1500 on both write and read, maybe slightly above 1500. So we're doubling the speed of the SSDs with each one of these steps. So this should give us a nice variety of different disk speeds to do our compilations from. And speaking of compilations, the test is going to include Xcode Benchmark, which is an Xcode project designed for benchmarking. And this is not just a benchmark. It's actually a pretty good test created by Max Yeremenka. And it includes a whole bunch of different uh, third party packages in the project. So it does a pretty large build, but not as big as WebKit. WebKit is another really huge project that's going to take us over 20 minutes or maybe even half an hour to build. Well, on the M2, it's probably going to take a few hours on the Core i5 to build that one. So I'm going to be sitting here for a while. Uh, make sure you take that time to hit that like button because I'm going to be sitting here for a while. So we've got Xcode, we've got the WebKit, which is actually, it's built using Xcode, but it's a C++ and Java project. And finally, I'm gonna throw in the Python Mandelbrot benchmark, which is going to utilize all the CPU cores that are available and completely max them out. I'll leave links to all these down in the description if you wanna run them yourself. And you'll also find more detailed examples of me explaining each one of these in my previous videos. All right, might as well kick things off with Xcode benchmark. And I'm gonna use the internal SSD for the first test 
because that's already connected. To run that, I just clone the repository and go into the folder and issue the shell script benchmark, which is going to use Xcode build behind the scenes to do the build. This program actually spits out the time at the end, so I don't need to use the time command to time this. But I do need to use the Schwarzenegger. This will help me execute the commands at the same time on both computers. And let's go. <laughs> Off they go. Now, we don't really need the Schwarzenegger because this is not a race. We know exactly which one of these machines will finish first. Of course, it's going to be the M2 MacBook Air, not this five-year-old machine. But it's fun anyway. Why not? I'll also run this a couple times just to get an average. Now, what's interesting here is pay attention to the temperatures that we're reaching. So the Intel box is actually allowing us to reach 103 degrees Celsius. Yes, this model of MacBook Air does have a fan in it, so that's kicked up. Over here on the M2, there is no fan, and Apple decided that it's acceptable for this machine, this processor, to reach 108 degrees Celsius, and I believe 110 degrees, from what I've read, is the absolute top limit. You don't want your processors getting to that, at which point things will go really bad. Now, even reaching 108, I don't know what that means for the longevity of the device, but we're talking about Apple here, and they have very smart engineers working there. Don't believe all the YouTube videos that say 108 degrees is really scary. Yes, it's higher than we've seen before, but we also have very smart people with engineering degrees that have been working at Apple for many, many years, building on that experience, allowing 108 degrees to happen. And guess what? This one's done and we've got 130 seconds here. So I'll enter that into my notes and I'll run this a few more times and I'll be back to do Python. I'm starting to realize my mistake here. I shouldn't have picked this old machine to do this on because that took 884 seconds, almost 15 minutes. And that's just one run. So this is going to take me a while. I already said that, didn't I? I just want you to feel my pain. Doing this for you, by the way. Hit that like button. All right, now we're gonna be doing the Mandelbrot test here. So I've already copied the code from Benchmark's game website. You'll find that down below. And I've created a new environment in Conda called Pi38, which is Python 3.8. That's where I'm going to execute my code. By the way, the keyboard on the M2 MacBook Air is just fantastic. I love it. Listen to that. That's the keyboard. Here's the older keyboard. The other day I was typing on this, my wife says, are you gonna be doing that all night? I was in front of the TV with her. Anyway, here I do have to use the time command because this program does not spit out the time. So time, Python, and then uh, main.py, and I give it the parameter 16,000 because that's what's in the benchmark documentation. You can vary that parameter depending how long you want the test to execute. And I will pipe the output to dev slash null. So we hide that. Ready to go. Let's do it. <laughs> now, this test makes the processor jump to the highest temperature, like almost instantly. It's pretty crazy. This is an intense one. You can see that the M2 is at 108 and it's consistently so. This one does not let the processor rest at all. Now, because this test is so intense on the processor, you can even see that on the uh, Intel-based MacBook Air, the fan is at 5300 RPM already. All that noise you're hearing, that's from that machine. All right, let's measure the temperature on this. So we're at 38 degrees Celsius on the surface temperature at the top. And on the bottom, right where the processor is, we're about 36. I was expecting that to be higher. The M2, 37 and 40 on the bottom. Of course, this one has no fan, so it's gonna be higher. So I ran this twice already on the M2 while this one is still running it for the first time. And uh, we got 56 seconds and 57. And we're done on the Intel box, which took six minutes and 23 seconds. Wow. Final test is WebKit. This one's gonna take a bit. And WebKit, if you don't know, that is actually a browser. It's what Safari is based on, but it's not written in Objective-C like you would think. There's actually C++ in there mostly and some Java. To build WebKit from source, just go to its GitHub page, link down below, clone that repository, which by itself takes a long time. I think it's over 13 gigabytes. And I don't remember if it prints out the time at the end, but I'm gonna give it the time command just in case. And we execute tools, scripts. I'm gonna do clean WebKit first which is a script that cleans out any objects that have already been built. And then once that's done, I'm gonna do build webkit dash dash debug. Okay, this is the big one. Ready? And let's go. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a few days. Huh? Is it over? 
Oh, I'm not doing that again. All right, let's review the results. The two shorter tests, Xcode Benchmark and Python Mandelbrot, they did better on the internal drive in general, but the difference is not that significant compared to the difference between processors. So the CPU seems to have far more significant factor in compilation time than the hard drive choice. I was actually pretty surprised to see the results here because given that the hard drives are so vastly different in their speeds, the fact that we got such close numbers for each individual test really means that the hard drives aren't actually used that much or don't play that much a role here. Here's the result for WebKit. And this one actually saw a slight decrease in time for the compilation on the custom SSD versus the internal, which I found bizarre. Nonetheless, the difference between CPUs, the Intel Core i5 MacBook Air versus the M2 MacBook Air, that's where the really huge difference is. And here's the chart that averages all the runtimes, just so that you can see it all on one chart. This definitely shows how much an impact the CPU has over the hard drive. Now, does this mean you should go out and run and buy the M2 MacBook Air or the M2 MacBook Pro? No, not really. Choosing your machine based on just these statistics is not a good idea. You probably want to evaluate your own situation, your work style, and your budget because you're going to need a big budget to get the new M2s. All right, that was a long video for me to shoot. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. If you like this kind of video, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you found this one useful or entertaining, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, I will see you in the next video.